Hello, everybody. Um, I'm uh, pleased to do uh, my first little video uh, newsletter. So many things going on r right now as this new school year begins that uh, what I decided to do is I'll walk you through a bunch of that in the uh, description of, of the video. I'll put a link to a PDF that will have links to all the stuff that uh, I'm pointing to and, and some related links. <clears throat> so um, what I'm going to do is just address these topics um, that are, are going around the world right now and, and some revisiting what's happened this summer. Um, the one thing about a video is you can pause whenever you want. I'm just highlighting these upcoming workshops um, right off the bat. Um, this is taken from my webpage, so you can click on any of those links if you go to wordworkskingston.com. Um, but let's start back in the this summer. Um, I was delighted to get to do uh, one other, the annual Nueva Schools SWI Summer Institutes. Um, these these have just been really important for the building of this understanding, not only at Nueva, but in the community and people from around the world have been coming to these. Um, and one of the things that's really been growing in these that I want to highlight, um, last year and this year we've had um, guest presenters from teachers at Nueva that have been uh, super uh, well received. Um, there's a couple pictures here. There's Rebecca uh, Loveless, the current SWI coach, and Kara Lee, the preschool teacher, sharing a work that they were, they've were they been doing. In the link uh, in the PDF I mentioned, I'll send a link to a, a video of Kara Lee teaching a preschool class. Uh, they look at the family of rain in a structural word inquiry kind of way. And then a, another more recent video um, that you can see where I talk with Kara Lee as we walk around her classroom and she shows me the kinds of stuff she has going on. Um, also at the Institute, uh, Erin Metcalf is presenting a kind of what she's been doing in grade two. Um, Rebecca supported all the way through, but has done some really great stuff with a uh, real script that I, I, I recommend you guys follow up at her website. Um, that's one of the things that she teaches. Um, we also had people from middle school. So Karen Teagle is just great uh, SWI teacher in the middle school there. Um, she shared what she's been doing and again, activities that are based on the kind of stuff she does in her class. She's done really great stuff with poetry and other, other work. So one of the things that Karen's really powerful at is illustrating teachers how she uses structured word inquiry as a means to teach the subject areas that she's doing, and she just does a great job. And these teacher presentations have been um, really well received, and of course, we'll do that again next year. I'm hoping we can get even more, perhaps even teacher or student presenters, but we have some schemes for what we're gonna be doing next summer. Um, I went from that one to a, a school near Boston for my first visit, and this was, um, exciting for me this is a school for children identified with learning disabilities with the dis in parentheses as they have on their website um it was i'm just excited when these schools working with kids with these kinds of issues have me come these guys athena academy i'm really uh, it's really exciting to see this kind of of work growing there look to do more there in the future um and then um then the next main thing in the summer was the annual summer course here's the the class of 2018, we just had a, a great time. And I, I, I have to say these, the, the Wolf Island summer course is, is definitely this most special one of the year with Sue's uh, doing the cooking and, and the way we get to just plunk ourselves on this Island and, and really dive in. We had a new, uh, a new uh, host, the, the general Wolf hotel that we're going to use again next year. That was great in terms of, the space we had to use and the location and, and everything. Um, and of course the real, one of the benefits of this Wolf Island course is not only the great meals that Sue's uh, makes for us, but the opportunity to sit around and talk with each other about stuff in informal ways. And really the, the, the meal time is one of the most valuable learning time of this, um, uh, this course. And anyway, so we'll be doing this again next year. Um, so that's what's been going on this summer, but what's coming up? Well, the first thing I wanted to highlight is coming very soon, September 2021st, I'll be in San Diego with the Dyslexia Training Institute. Um, I've 
done a fair bit of work with these guys in the past, but this is the first time I get to do a workshop they're hosting, and that's going to be great. Um, it's also a bonus because this this school, the Leonardo da Vinci Health Sciences Charter School, um, is also in San Diego. And I point this one out because this is a school I've done a number of online workshops with that has really helped them get going. But going in person is going to be great now. And so just the idea that if you're looking for PD with me and not sure about being able to get me to come, I just want to highlight the value of doing online workshops using this Zoom program that you can see. I can share my screen like this. And then I get to go to LA back uh, where one of the people who really got me going in, in Bay Area, um, Emily Johnson is now, she was at Nuevo before and we've been, again, we've been working online with these guys and I get to come and work with them. And then another one I really need to highlight right away is I'm going to be doing a one day workshop uh, in Palo Alto at the end of all that, uh, working with Athena Academy that I mentioned before, a school for dyslexic kids. And um, they've been doing brilliant work with this for some time now. And it's, it's just really exciting to see uh, this work growing in that in that community. I'll be working with them for one day um, on my own, but then on the Saturday they're hosting a public workshop. And this has been another way that the work has really grown in the Bay Area. So uh, follow the links to get more information on that. And I just want to highlight that actually I'm planning to return to the Bay Area um, about a month later. And I have some schools that are lined up. A really valuable way to go would be to come and take a little team to this one day workshop, have a, have a month to kind of try things and then have me come to your school. So just so you know, if you're interested, contact me there. Um, later in the year, I'll be going, returning to the Ontario branch of the IDA. Um, I presented there quite a while ago, uh, I'm not sure, two, three years ago. And it's been amazing how much uh, work that has generated. Um, the I've done a lot of work at this El Huda school in Toronto that resulted from this and they've hosted workshops and the Toronto interest is really growing. Um, in that summer course, we had a bunch of teachers from Toronto and I'm going to Toronto actually today to go to work at another school. Um, so I'm really excited about the interest growing in Toronto. Um, and uh, there's another one that we're that's brewing in Europe and I just want to highlight this because um, I think this is going to happen and and if we get to do this public workshop, of course, people in that area could send a team. But if you're in that area and looking at potential having become um, building on this time makes the travel cheaper for, for the schools and, and all sorts of things. So just keep that in mind. Um, in the new year, even we get to, I get to do a return to Edmonton. The ERLC has been doing really supportive of this work in public schools in the area this started with uh, my uh, work with the University of Alberta with uh, Rana Perilla was first bringing me there. And then I've been working with George Georgiou and he's been doing great work with structured word inquiry. And in fact, is in a midst of an intervention study I'm quite excited about um, that I was helping with. And anyways, they the public system there has had people come more and more workshops. And this is a, we did a, what I'm calling a classroom embedded workshop. I've done this in a number of places on the first day where I will teach three lessons over the course of the day that participants get to observe and then we debrief. Um, and that, if you attend that one, you could, there's only room if you also attend the one or two day workshop that follows, which is with teachers. So there'll be more information about that. But I do want to touch, so first of all, I'm psyched that this is all working on public schools in, in Edmonton, which is really growing. Um, but I, I also am going to point you to this idea of hosting a public workshop. Um, I have a page that you can link to and you can see how that works um, with images of the kind of activities going on in these, in these workshops. Um, the thing about uh, the classroom embedded uh, way of doing this is that the t the host school um, ends up getting much cheaper PD because I'm at your school and you get to attend that one without paying the normal fee. Um, and then if you, on top of that, have host a workshop, I my payment comes out of the registrations and you get a very good cheap PD. So something to, to keep an eye out. And especially if you combine that with the classroom embedded workshop, it's, it's really been a really good model. So I just wanted to share that and you can read about that online. Um, the other thing that's really uh, an exciting new thing is our, the first structured word inquiry conference um, is going to be happening. Host language insights, um, Mary McBride and Ellen Mayer are going to be, are the kind of been organizing this and 
Um, it's going to be a, a great deal. The, the day before, I'm going to be doing a pre-conference. The March 1st and 2nd are the, the actual conference, and there'll be keynotes by myself and Gina Cook and Doug Harper and many more. Um, you can find out there's a link to this flyer to check out, and there's more information coming, but it's going to be really quite exciting. Aside from our, the, the three of us presenting, there'll be other presenters, and what I'm really excited about is teachers from this area that are, again, in public schools that have been working with us are going to present their learning as well, and we'll, we'll, you'll hear more about that. Um, and finally, in terms of public workshops in 2019 that are already booked, I'm very excited that I get to have been invited to do a keynote at the, the main uh, annual conference for literacy in Australia. This year it's in Melbourne, and uh, it looks like there's going to be a, a pre-conference institute I'll be doing there too. But it's the work, the, the work that's going on in Australia. I've been going to Melbourne for a long time, Lynn Anderson and Whiting. There's really a powerful group of, of educators that are really doing this work now. And uh, anyways, so I wanted to give you a heads up about that as well. Um, so what I want to do now is take a look at some of these other things that are going on. Uh, we'll take a look at the research first. One thing that um, you may have encountered is my brother Jeff uh, uh, Bowers, who's a, a, pro, uh, a prof at the University of Bristol, um, he does all sorts of work. His main work has always been in cognitive science, but of late he's gotten interested in the work that I've been doing and been taking a look at it from his work. So we've published some articles together. And this blog is actually, you can get access to all of that work we've done together. But um, I really like the way Jeff frames the articles and the discussions in this blog. Um, so I really recommend you check it out and that the comments are, are looking specifically for critical analysis and response. We we're looking not for people just to agree, but people to have discussions. And in fact, one of these posts is an article we've, relates to an article we've published um, responding in the research to um, other ideas in the research, and then we have another piece that addresses all that. So I encourage you to check out what Jeff has got going. Um, I also just want to highlight this About WordWorks page is a good starting place, links to all sorts of things and videos. But just so you know, if you're looking, people often ask me, "Can you sh where, what research do you have? It's all linked down here. So if you want to get at most of it is, is linkable. Some, we have a new, my Jeff and I have a new article in press that I'm quite excited about. Obviously, that one's not there. But um, just so you know where you can get access to that. And another interesting thing that happened recently was um, Tim Shanahan is a, is a well-known researcher there. Recently, he, he, uh, he sent an email to my brother, and Jeff and I have commented a fair bit on, on Tim's blog and often challenging him on, on things that he has said. And, and what I really liked was when he got this letter with a question, I, I sent an e a response, and he was intrigued by it and wanted to share it, and I said, for, go for it. Um, but the point that I really like is that um, in his blog, he points out that, you know, we have often, often been challenging with his stuff and he's quite happy to be challenged and to have different views on here. So he's shared my response and his own thinking on it. And I also would highlight that the comments section here that follows, I think, is a rich place to, to follow. And to see, because the questions that come up are the kind of questions that uh, people often have. And I've, since a lot of this is based on something that I wrote, I've really responded a fair bit in this particular post. But it's great to see this work growing out and, and hats off to Tim for being happy to share things that he agrees with some and disagrees with some of our views. And that's the way, it, that's the way it should be, sharing ideas like that. And the other thing, last thing I want to point about in the research is there, there are a couple of research article or chapters or that have come out with my with John Kirby and myself of late. This one is a little in 2017 about our binding hypothesis about morphology instruction, which I think is is quite helpful. Builds on uh, work by Perfetti with his lexical quality hypothesis. I believe it links to cognitive load theory. Um, and anyways, I if you're interested in that that theory and uh, research, there's that chapter I recommend. And then just more recently. Um, this chapter, and there was a panel on this at the recent uh, SSSR conference that 
John presented at. Um, and this one, I would emphasize that I like this chapter in that it gives a lot more, it gave us time for more practical examples of instruction. You'll see lots of examples that you may have seen me post in WordWorks, which is nice to see out in these kind of re this work. But um, also we talk about other languages. So there's examples of a French matrix. Here's a Spanish matrix of the same family of an English matrix. And uh, so I just highlight that that's a, a chapter that you might be interested in checking out. And uh, let's take a look at some of the references. Um, so one, one reference that is really the starter reference for all of this is real spelling. Uh, the spellinars that he runs are just brilliant. And after a bit of a pause, he's really diving back into these. So if you are interested in deepening your understanding of orthography, I know of no richer way than to do a, a spell in R with real spelling. Um, you also check out his website. The real spelling gallery is just a brilliant reference. Um, and there's more stuff coming here. Um, so, um, in terms of a reference for understanding orthography, remember if you're working with real spelling, you're not going to get any advice about instruction. It's about you doing your orthographic understanding and then you can make your instructional choices. And I think that works really well. Um, Gina Cook um, is another person I highly recommend in terms of the references that she's got going. Her website has been recently um, upgraded with the store. And one of the main uh, exciting things that people have been waiting for are the new graphing cards. Um, but here you, at her store, you can see the Lexinars that you can take. I highly recommend those for studying. Um, but the new the new thing is the the uh, graphing cards and the third edition and just illustrating that she's a, a researcher um, she keeps revising them as her understanding grows um, so i i can't overemphasize the value of the linguistically valid uh, resources or blogs and 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 lexinars that you can study both the lexinars and the uh, spellinars are real-time video courses that you take I also noticed when I went back that she's announced her dates for the next uh, etymology conference, this one in Dayton. So I just wanted to highlight that date. Um, I've been lucky enough to attend. I think I've attended six of the seven. And I, whenever I can make it, I definitely find these extremely uh, rich. And with Doug Harper, it's always a treat as well. So resources. So now here are things that um, are things that I are, are more related specifically that include the notion of how to teach things, but always built on a, a, a rich understanding of, of the orthography system. One thing I really wanted to highlight is my, um, I've updated both the resource and the page for this process of, of spelling out loud, which is um, just every year I find that this process is more and more central. I did even refer to it in the 2010 uh, vocabulary paper I did with John, but it's really evolved in detail and precision since then. My language around some of this has changed, and my website was just a bit of a mess on this page, so I've re revamped it. You, you can get the link to this document that has a whole bunch of information. There's a document that explains it, the detail about it, and then some videos. So I think this is a central part of the practice of structure word inquiry. So if you're in structure word inquiry, I hope you take a look. Um, another resource that I just was dying to point to is the most recent post of Mary Beth Stevens. Now I recommend anything on her blog. Um, and she is, she also is teaching online courses that I have recommend um, and just spend time exploring her blog. But there was something about this, this recent one that caught my eye and the way she describes um, what she's doing in class. And in this one, she talks more about the theory behind it that I think is really well done. Um, so I'm going to highly recommend you go there. Um, and again, don't just explore that page, but all of her work I just think is brilliant. Um, I also want to mention um, Rebecca Lovelace's website. I mentioned she's the uh, current SWI coach at Nueva. Um, but she also uh, does her own uh, consultant's work um, and her website is super rich. Um, I hope you explore it. Um, one recent person, somebody recently um, emailed me with a question I, I so frequently get about where, you know, where to start. And I happened to have just visited this page 
And this idea of word bag excitement, now this is an activity that grows out of Lynn Anderson's work, and you'll see the link in there, from Melbourne. And this is a, a w thing that has really grown around the world that is really helpful. Is you also see a similar thing in the video I pointed to with Care Lee, but I would like the way uh, Rebecca presents this understanding and this this process here. And if you're looking for just what could I do, this this might this happens to be a preschool class, but you could adapt it to any grade. And if you're looking for where to start, I highly recommend that. And in terms of if you're in the Bay Area, um, and actually elsewhere because she's doing online work as well, um, she works at schools. But one thing that I really point people to her a lot for is real script because it's such an important thing and. And Rebecca's really made this a bit of a specialty. But so there's this, also the study group that I, I highly recommend and any in intro. So I just another yet another source and there's many more. But I just wanted to highlight that there's another place that you can go. Um, and yet another is Scott Mills, um, who's been doing an amazing amount of work in a short amount of time. And she, he's really developed his website. Um, and I'm recommending that you spend time there. Um, you can see the basic categories, but he's doing, and he's doing workshops in person, but also online, which you can investigate. But the thing that I really got to point to is he, uh, here it is, he's got a shop with, uh, he's produced great resources that are linguistically just strong and, and reliable for teachers to use. And in the, but in the context of, of what teachers are, might want to look at. So I highly recommend that, but also just following his blog. Great stuff, videos, and finally, interviews that he's, he's sought out interviews with language experts, not even just in orthography, but language, and, and they're just fascinating. And you know, he's got folks like uh, Steven Pinker on there, which is pretty wild, um, and others, some names you are familiar, and maybe some not. But just as an illustration of the kinds of things that you have access to there. And again, the, the resources that are appropriate for structured word inquiry aren't the things you can just get anywhere. They, they need to be built by people who have spent time understanding English orthography. Um, and certainly Scott is one of those. Rebecca, Gina, Mary Beth, all these folks are are building, sharing what they're learning as they act like scientists understand the writing system themselves and working with teachers and kids. Um, and finally, I wanted to highlight that um, Scott is announcing a, a, an online conference he wants to do in which he wants to draw on the expertise of teachers and tutors doing this work. And so when you go to the link in the document I mentioned, you can see this call for proposals describing, but the idea is that it would be a paid um, presentation that you would make a video of that would then be part of a conference um, about your about something to do with working with structured word inquiry. So um, I just I know there's a lot of information in a short time. Um, hopefully you can pause and find things that you needed in there. And as I say, the document will have links to all of that and much more. Um, but it's, it's really quite, um, wild, the, the, the extent to which structured word inquiry is, is growing around the world in these hubs, like in, in Chicago and the Bay area, Edmonton, Melbourne are places where it's, um, already really well established Bangkok. Um, and, and that this is resulting in all, a whole community of people creating resources based on their own orthographic study and their and their practice and in, uh, in with working with with kids and anybody in literacy. So hopefully that was a useful way to share what's going on. I I have a ton of things that I could share in a newsletter, but <laughs> that th this is the best way to do this one. I think. So have a good year.